today we are going to talk about the seven key steps to start a coaching business. coach and feeling a little bit overwhelmed and with all the must do like people were telling you like this is what you should do this is what you must do and you're like okay i got that but how do i actually put this in more tangible steps so i know exactly what to do next i remember i was going through this and some of my clients i have worked with they came to me one day and they said michelle you know what i wish i have I wish I have a checklist that I can just go step by step. This is what I need to do. And I know exactly uh, what has already been done. So I'm like sitting there and thinking back to my own journey of how I started my own coaching business. And honestly, I was swamped. <laughs> I was swamped. I was working a full-time job and I was swamped by all the advice and tip. And every time you ask a question in a community, in a group, you feel like you're being attacked <laughs> by the fact that, all these coaches wanted to jump in to share their advice and not only share their advice, but also to coach you around the mindset of why you're feeling like I'm stuck, right? I'm, I'm feeling like I'm swamped and I am overwhelmed. And sometimes, yeah, that overwhelming feeling is that anxiety of the unknown, but more in reality is I really don't know how to do it. And when you don't know how to do things, of course that fear comes out. Of course that overwhelming feeling comes out. So tell me how to do it and I'll be fine. I'll be good. And that was my mindset and that was my whole intention of going into mentor coaching and going into marketing because I know that my mindset, I can work on that. I have plenty of coaches, mindset coaches, life coaches who can help me to unblock those areas where I feel blocked, but it is the tangible steps that I needed, the strategy, the system. Someone lay out the roadmap of, here it is, Michelle, go and do this. And one by one, I will get them done. So that's how I discovered that a lot of time we're overcomplicating a lot of things that we think on how to build a coaching business, right? We think that we need to have a funnel. We need to have a, a CRM that track all the billings and all these uh, messages that's coming through and I need to send a follow-up emails. It's way too complex, especially if you're just starting new. So what I found was really helpful, especially from where I started. So I started as a life coach and mindset coach, and that was my first year building that and just focusing on building that life coaching business. I realized that just by simplifying a lot of things and a lot of steps I'm going to share with you today, you're actually on a better path and you're actually on an accelerated path to get to where you want to be instead of wasting your time listening to all these different advices and tips and people tell you, oh, go try this, go try that. And so I remember in my first year of coaching business, I did a lot of things. I tried one workshop to another workshop and I saw these coaches throwing up five-day challenge or seven-day challenge. And so I was following that same strategy and method. So I created a seven-day challenge which nobody signed up and comment down below if this is how you feel too maybe you created an event in the past but there's nobody it's empty seats and you're just going into a zoom call with no participant to talk about and at that situation what do you do right so of course you're feeling overwhelmed because no one ever told you that these are the steps that need to be in place before you actually think about offering this five-day challenge or seven-day challenge so I did a lot of testing and throwing things around and hopefully this will work in that first year of business. So today we're going to talk about the seven key steps that is going to help you to actually launch with confidence and clarity. Okay, so seven key steps to start your coaching business. Step number one, defining your niche and ideal client. I know, right? Like shocking, <laughs> like Michelle, can you tell me something different? Unfortunately, no, because that would be your step number one. If you think about where we all start, and there's a reason why everybody's talking about it. So imagine uh, you probably play this game throwing the dots on the wall, right? Especially in an online space. If you're, if you're doing this in person, I get it. Maybe you're talking to different people and, and you can keep it pretty general and you can do it through the word of mouth and that's not a problem. You might not need to narrow down your niche. But if we're talking about a really busy and 
and crowded online space, it's like throwing dots on the wall. You're lucky if you hit the center of that dot board. But most of us, we don't have that kind of luck. So you're throwing a lot of dots and the dots they just fall to the ground and you're basically having zero client, right? So your step number one out of the seven key steps to start your coaching business is to define your niche and find your ideal avatar, your ideal client. Now, I have a different approach because I know a lot of coaches out there, they teach you with these external strategies and method. You go out there and look for uh, a client or a niche that is profitable, that is going to bring you and generate revenue. And so it might be something that's in high demand or something that's very niche. My approach is that's great, that's fine and dandy, but I think what's more important is actually connecting back to your heart and your passion. What do you want, <laughs> right? In my first year of coaching business, I was a leadership coach. I put my leadership hat on and I was a leadership coach. Why leadership? Well, I spent the last 15, 20 years in a healthcare environment. It was a very toxic environment, but I, I thought maybe I can leverage that network and find clients. I can work internally as a coach or I can actually start externally if they wanted to come out and be these healthcare professional, they wanted to uh, work with me one-on-one. -on -one. So I started out as a leadership coach in that sense that, well, it was easy for me to tap into that immediate network. That didn't work out. Number one, it was a toxic environment that I'm trying to get out of, and there's no reason, absolutely no reason, for me to get back to that toxic environment, right? So if you're trying to get out of something that you're already feeling exhausted and overwhelmed and burned out, then having that niche, yeah, it would be easy access, but does it even make sense for you to actually stay in that toxic environment? Chances are no. So my approach is helping you from an inside out approach so that you can actually find that passion that you're truly just automatically magnetized just by being who you are. So a lot of what I focus on, and I created a whole module of the Profitable Coach Formula on this, because I really truly believe that in order for your coaching business to be sustainable and that last forever, you need to understand like who is behind that business. So we focus a lot about the passion that you have. So from your passion, then we can figure out what your niche, what your ideal client looks like. And there's one of the exercise I included in the formula is that you would have to actually create a detailed map out description of who that ideal client is. And that becomes actually something helpful for us to work on your branding later. And that is actually a reference point that you can always refer back later on. So that's more for that to come later when I talk about step number four. Okay, so that was the first step of out of the seven key steps to start your coaching business. Define your niche and your ideal avatar, but I think uh, it's important to think about who is behind this whole coaching business and what are you passionate about? passionate about and what do you want and i think a lot of coaches don't ask this question enough to themselves what do you want <laughs> right <laughs> what do you want this is your business and so what are you passionate about instead of thinking about oh is this niche going to bring me a high ticket paying clients that's nice and great but if you end up finding yourself going back to that toxic relationship that toxic environment that's not why you started your coaching business is it so, okay, so I think we got into step number one. Step number two of the seven key steps to start your coaching business is you want to understand what is your unique strength, uh, what do you have, your perfect unique gifts that you can bring into a coaching relationship, right? So one of the things that I discovered was I was really good. I was notorious for uh, uh, negative self-talk. I, I have this imposter syndrome. I have a doctor's degree, but despite the fact that I had a doctor's degree, there was always a voice in my head saying that I was not good enough. I couldn't compete in the environment, in the world. And so there was a lot of negative self-talk that I was doing, but I also found the gift within that. And so your step number two is looking at your journey, looking at all the stuff that you have done in, in the past, what do you have to bring onto the table that makes you stand out and make you different? And one of the things that makes me also different is that I'm, I'm great with storytelling. I, when, I, when you're a negative self-talker, you're a great storyteller. Let me tell you why. 
Okay. <laughs> so when I was doing a lot of negative self-talking, I was creating a lot of narratives in my head. And so I would be going to an event and I already have the event, uh, the description, the outcome, the details about what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to say. I would have that all mapped out in my mind. And, and those of you who's also negative South talker, let me know if this is true, right? You have it all mapped out and which makes you really super unique for doing the storytelling because you have that ability of mapping out the exact scenario of how the event would go. Now, that was something that I discovered out of nowhere because I mean, usually we think about the, the negative quality that we have, but we don't think about the positive. So step number two is think about the positive qualities that you already have and how can we leverage that positive quality into your coaching package or coaching business so that makes you completely different and out of the norm that makes Makes you stand out from the crowd. So that's step number two is finding your unique. Sometimes you'll hear people say this. It's about finding your unique value proposition. What do you have to offer that is so different from everybody else? Well, for me, it's that storytelling. I'm natural narrative of storyteller. <laughs> so that's what makes me really different. And that's what makes me really great in terms of email marketing, writing social media copy. It just comes natural to me. All right, step number three of seven key steps to start your coaching business is once you know who you're going to sell it to, once you know what is it that makes you different and what you have to bring to the table, your next step is to actually craft that signature offer, right? And so just this week, I published a podcast episode on how to create your signature offer. If you are interested to hear that episode, all you have to do is simply go to Make It Visible podcast. You can find my podcast on all major platforms. And I did a whole episode on developing your signature offer. So just go to Make It Visible podcast and you're going to hear that episode. But step number three in the seven key steps to start your coaching business is you want to have an offer. Even if you don't have a signature offer and you'll hear this in my podcast episode, even if you don't have a off, uh, signature offer, you want to put together something that you can describe, you can articulate to your audience that, hey, this is what I offer and this sounds like something that you wanted to do. Let's have a talk and here's how much it is. And again, Go check out my podcast episode because in the episode, I talked about the pricing, how you decide your signature offer, and there are three key elements that you do inside this signature offer that you develop. All right, so remember earlier in step number one, I told you about the exercise I have inside my Profitable Coach Formula. So using that exercise, it's going to allow you to build your personal brand because you have mapped out your ideal client and you have actually discovered what is your true gift that you bring into your coaching business. The next step is actually how to create that personal brand that you can showcase in an online presence, creating this visual of, what your audience need to see, hear, and know about you and your business. So step number four is building your personal brand. Now, personal brand is more than just the logo, the website, the color of your website, right? It also has to do with how you show up to live video like this or how you show up in writing copies or presenting your article. Some of us sound more professional. Uh, if you follow me on, on my Facebook, you'll notice that I have a little bit of sense of humor. I'm also a pusher. <laughs> I like to push people. I like to push the buttons, okay? If there's a button, I will push it. I'm a pusher. I'm a warrior. I have uh, a sense of humor. So if you follow along, sometimes I have these posts that would make you laugh. If you're not following me right now on Facebook, please do follow me on Facebook at Coach Michelle Quay. And you'll notice that I have different things. And that's my personal brand. And this is how you get to know me. And I remember a couple of months ago, I was meeting a book club member for the very first time. So how I show up online is how I show up in person. There's really no difference at all. And so I was having dinner with this uh, book club member. We sat down and the first thing that she opened her mouth and she said to me was, Michelle, you look exactly the same like you are on Zoom. Hello, <laughs> that's exactly what I want you to feel. Whether you're meeting me in a Zoom or online or in person, it's the same Michelle that you're going to get, no one else. Okay, and that's important to create your personal brand. And so step number four is about building your personal brand. Step number five of the seven key steps to start your coaching business is building that visibility. 
I cannot stress enough. Well, first of all, I'm a visibility marketing coach, so I am totally biased because visibility is something that you're going to need, especially in this online world, that you need to build your reputation, you need it to build your credibility, you need to build it your with your authority, right? So without visibility, you have no audience, you have no growth. And if you have no audience, no growth, that means there's no leads that's coming through, no matter how much you're charging or how great your coaching program is, if people can see you, they can buy from you. So visibility is so important, but how exactly do you create that visibility? How do you be visible? Just creating video like this is great, but a lot of time you'll see it fall flat because, well, people might not be interested to watch it. Maybe you don't have the topic that you want to talk about that interests people and it's not attention grabbing. And nowadays, because we're so busy, if you don't have something that's attention grabbing, then people will just completely scroll you by and you get missed altogether. So what I do is inside my module number five, I have mapped out a whole system of how you can build your coaching business with the visibility that you need using one very simple task. And you're probably already doing this. So a lot of you are going out there and trying to network and busy going from one network to another network, attending one meeting to another meeting or one Zoom call to another Zoom call. And you'll notice that it's very time consuming. And for me, back in the days when I first built my coaching business, time was something that's very valuable to me. And I had no time to waste and I didn't want to waste any time. And so what I did was because online space is free, First of all, it doesn't cost you anything. And I can be on there, right, almost 24 seven, it never close. And it's easy to access and I can reach out to more people. And a lot of these uh, connections that I make on a day-to-day -day basis are people I have never met online. I have friends who I have been uh, in that friendship for the last 20 years and we're still connected. So. There's such a powerful thing behind the online space that many people are, are kind of just missed out on the whole opportunity. It is, is it easy? No, it's not easy, which is why I encourage all my students, if you want your coaching business to grow, be sustainable, you actually want to make it profitable, then if you have not thought about being in online space, then you definitely want to start that early because that is actually going to take some time to build up versus attending these networking events. Sometimes it's like people put it together, it's already there, you're just tapping into other people's network, it's easy access, but again, you're paying it with the time that you have. Now, most of my students are still working a full-time job, right? So a lot of you are tied to a full-time job and you might not have the time to actually attend from networking to networking. So step number five in building your visibility is you want to look at what do you have, right? Maybe it's about building your online space. You're optimizing your Facebook, optimizing your LinkedIn, whichever platform that you choose to build your coaching business on, you want to optimize it and making sure that you're visible. And what do you show up with? I got more content, just comment down below, visibility, and I will share my content with you. I made a couple of videos in terms of how do you build that uh, visibility online. And I also have videos on what are some of the things that you can do to attract and get paying clients specifically on Facebook. So if you want those videos, just comment down below and I will send the videos to you. All right, step number six of seven steps to start a coaching business is you want to have a marketing plan. So you have the visibility online, you optimize your social media, you optimize your profile, you decided which platform you want it to be on. Next step is to have a marketing plan, right? You choose your platform. And by the way, I have a video on that as well. So you choose your platform and then your next step is you want to be consistent. How do you be consistent? You need material. You need the content to actually post regularly. And not only that, because one of the things I was talking to my email community is that a, a lot of coaches, they're being consistent in posting, but they're just posting and the post doesn't lead them anywhere. And so by the time, maybe like a month, two months down the line, you're not seeing any growth. You don't see any increase in your audience growth. You don't see any increase in the engagement and you don't see any increase of people having conversation with you, right? So you may be posing, no doubt, right? You're consistent in posing. You have material in your, that you're posting all the time, but 
you don't have the strategy behind why you need to post and what do you need to post in order to get that engagement, in order to get that growth, in order to get people to have conversation with you. With that, you need a whole marketing plan. We need to sit down and actually map out what does that look like for you so that every post that you send out actually is meaningful and purposeful. And again, I have a whole module dedicated to do this. And I also have a social media content plan. So if you want that uh, uh, resource to help you to actually map it out, I do have resource for you. So just comment down below content and I will send that over to you. The last thing I want you to do and the last thing I would hate to see is you spending so much time and just doing what everybody else is advising you or, or uh, telling you to do, right? Keep showing up, posting, but exactly where does that lead you to? You need a plan. So comment down below, content plan, and I will send you that copy. Okay, so last step, number seven, is actually to launch and promote your coaching business. Now, this step is tied closely with step number six, right? Because you showing up on social media, hopefully it's leading to something. And that leading to something could be launching your next event. It could be you have a coaching package that you wanted to talk about. It could be uh, launching your coaching package to that. It could be you're speaking somewhere. Great, you got invited to a podcast. We also need to promote that. So there's a lot of planning and strategic way of showing up, building that visibility, and all this is tied together. So that steps in step number six, creating a marketing plan is super important and super valuable. Again, I do have a worksheet created for this. So all you have to do is just comment down below content plan and I will send that planner for you, okay? All right, so seven steps to start your coaching business. We cover defining your niche, crafting your unique value proposition or your unique gift that you bring onto the table, developing your signature offer. I do have a podcast episode. So go to Make It Visible podcast and you'll be able to hear that episode on how to develop your signature offer, building your personal brand, increasing your visibility, especially if you're doing this online and you would like to work from anywhere. If you love to travel, you want to work with clients from somewhere else, then increasing your online visibility is super important. And all the efforts that you put onto social media, it needs to lead you to somewhere, right? So creating that marketing plan and finally being able to launch your offer and to talk about and articulate your offer that would be the step number six and number seven. Now, I know it seems like it's a lot of steps, but trust me, if you break it down into these seven steps, it becomes more manageable and it's totally doable. And this is how I was able to go from being a leadership coach and to like discovering, oh, I don't actually like leadership. I want to get out of that toxic environment. I want to stop being in that toxic environment. That was the reason why I got out of it. <laughs> so there's no way I'm going back there. And so you really have to think about what are you passionate about? What do you want to do? And because I know these seven steps, if you're listening to this episode, you're watching this episode, seven steps is still a lot, right? Starting your life coaching business can feel really overwhelmed and I totally get it. Let's be honest, it's not for the faint of heart, right? And that is why I've created the Profitable Coach Formula and I'm really excited because the enrollment is open this week. This is an eight-week program. It's easy to follow step-by-step, step, like what I had just said about the seven key steps to start your coaching business. And this is designed to help you to build your coaching business from scratch, from the beginning, or maybe you're one to three years out in your coaching business, but you're struggling to get those paying clients. We need to actually map out whole strategies so that you can actually get there quickly and easily. So you're going to get this comprehensive training modules that cover all these key elements I have just talked about to grow and scale your coaching business. Plus, we're going to have live coaching hours with me, not anyone else, with yours truly inside a private community of like-minded coaches. Plus, Profitable Coach Formula doesn't just stop here. You're also going to have access to all my templates and ongoing supports throughout the whole entire eight weeks, and you'll never have to go anywhere alone.
I'm always going to be there to hold your hand, to guide you. And I also pack some extra bonuses to help you to hit the ground running. I know a lot of you have been asking about what would be a good CRM, the client relationship management program that you could use. So I put together a done for you CRM platform or like a CRM platform so that you can keep track of all your daily tasks, your content creation, and you can keep everything all in one place. What you're also going to yeah, is a full year of content pack. So I lay out that every single day you get a topic, you get an idea so that you never run out of ideas of what to create on your next social media post or your blog post or your video. You always have the idea of what to talk about next. Plus, I know social media can be a little bit challenging. And so a lot of you might not be Great initially in posting on social and creating that visibility that we talked about. So what I have done is I created a 30 day done for you social media post template so that you don't have to start from scratch. So if you're ready to start your coaching business and make it a profitable and sustainable business, then head over to profitablecoachformula.com to learn more about how you can save a spot. And remember, the enrollment is open now, so go check it out.